is the world at war that's a question that very many people ask and try to answer themselves and you know answers are everywhere again with whatever is happening uh there is uh september uh, february 24th you know russia invaded ukraine uh and they said it was a special military operation to the ukrainians and there is because of the long history that uh, no, uh, stands between Russia and Ukraine, that uh, you know Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union, so Big Brother Russia comes and say, "Hey, young brother, I need you now. I have to take you now because you belong to me." My father said, "You know, you have a long history." My father said, "You belong to me, so I can take you out." And then they go in with you know massive artillery, and I believe that was another show, or like Russia wanted to show the world, you know. Uh, we have some uh, we've developed some toys and uh, we want to put them on the real time practice some a real time you know test you know so we're going to send some into the end but we all know how that ended up you know uh, it has gone to be the longest war again uh, marking the third year i think uh, since the war started so they are still fighting you know they are still fighting but ukraine has been able to uh, reclaim some of the part that russia had taken uh good luck to them you know and, and that success a greater success over uh, ukraine uh, such a small country with uh, you know one of the major world powers you know that is a success to them and then uh, after the ukraine uh, the ukraine russia war not really after during the ukraine russia war again you know uh, hamas things you know they've got it all they've got it all you know they have also developed some toys and uh, they think those toys are so sufficient enough to for them to take over israel Oh, on 7th October, again, hey, Hamas hits in Israel. Wow. Killing thousands of people and injuring thousands of them. And that is, you know, worst mistake that can ever happen, that someone can ever think to do on Israel. So, Israel declares war with Hamas, and Hamas are in Palestine. Then Israel starts, you know, shelling Hamas one by one, one by one, one by one, uh, building by building, you know, and they get themselves to being able to destroy most of, uh, you know, what Hamas had built, thinking that it's strong enough to take over Israel. And it's on, the war it's on, the war it's on. You know, the, um, the Prime Minister Netanyahu say, hey, you guys, we will not end this until all of you are terminated, until there be no more Hamas within our you know within our view until there'll be no more hamas within our view and that continues and the war is still on within that time you know uh there comes other you know islamic uh, rebel groups you know the Houthi that are claiming that to defend uh, they're defending uh uh you know they're defending uh is uh, defending gaza or palestine you know they are in solidarity with gaza and palestine and now they start you know uh provoking uh the west they start provoking uk they start provoking uh, france they start provoking you know uh uh us by you know uh, you know um taking over the ships in the red sea the trade ships in the Red Sea, that, those are not battleships. They're taking over the rare, you know, the uh, business ships, you know, um, uh, trade ships within the Red Sea. And uh, after them taking over, I think uh, they are cautioned by the U.S. like, hey, neighbor, I can see what you're doing and I know your intentions. If you don't stop doing what you're doing down there, then I'm going to rain on you heavily and you don't want to like it. And the whole they say, you know what? We've had what you've done. We've seen what you've done. But you're not going to do that to us because we are prepared for the worst and for the good. And if you don't get out of here, we will sink your ships like our brother. Sink our ships. You just messed up with the worst and you know that. So we will come for you. We're going to come for you. Be prepared for us. We're going to come for you. And then how the rebels continue. These are guys in the Yemen. They continue doing the same, you know, threatening the ships within the Red Sea, uh, trade ships within the Red Sea, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, U.S., after them taking over some uh, uh, trade ships with the U.S. and the U.K., you know, oil tankers and all that, the U.S. decides and the U.K. decides to respond. And the response of the U.S. and the U.K. combined, you know, is tougher to these guys. It shakes and trembles them, you know. But they still stand and say, yeah. We've seen what you've done and we'll be back for you guys in a very, 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 very
I come on, come on, bring it on, bring it on. I think that's what you guys will say, uh, probably because there's nothing that Yemen and healthy, how, how these healthy rebels can do to the U.S., you understand. It's a superpower, so they got to trade carefully. If they don't, then something might come up worse for them. And then after that, again, it doesn't take long, you know. Uh, you know, Iran is on the side of uh, or supporting Iran is supporting Hamas, and Iran accuses U.S. of all the atrocities and all that. And then uh, the very, very Iran comes into battle with Pakistan. Now, what's happening between these two brothers, Pakistan and Iran? So they start fighting. You know, Iran sent missiles to Pakistan. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Some to Iraq. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Some to Afghanistan. Ta -ta 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 -ta. And they're like, oh, it's messing up. They're messing up. So the Middle East, it's at war. The Middle East is literally at war. Wow. So they're fighting, fighting against each other. Then uh, Pakistan says, hey, bro, you send it. You know that we don't have the ability to send back some. We will show you our ability on how we can or what we can do when we are provoked and then they send some shoo, 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 into iran then iran's like oh so you were prepared we can uh, you're prepared to do this thing yeah so do you want us to do it then then, bro then the brothers have to come in and start intervening and this like ah don't do that the afghans come in and say don't do that uh, uh it's good uh, like lower the tensions lower the tensions we don't want we don't want this thing to escalate to the worst, you know. We want peace and we want to live in peace and we want to maintain peace. Yeah, we're brothers, we're brothers and brothers don't fight. But brothers do fight, you know. Brothers do fight. In this world, it's a world of man eat man. Hmm? The strongest will survive. That is it. It was in the beginning and it is and it shall be. Whoever is stronger is the one who will control. And that is it. That's why guys are fighting day and night, you know, creating and making more, you know, weapons, you know, things that can kill mass destruction, weapons of mass destruction, things that can kill other people to give them an advantage to rule them if you have them. You control the world. Talk of the nuclear weapons that, you know, guys, some few countries, you know, are boasting of, you know, I have a uh, hundred and something nuclear warheads. I have 200 and something nuclear warheads and have nuclear warheads. And that is what's keeping them afloat. Talking of the nuclear warheads that are keeping people afloat, let's talk about North Korea. North Korea. North Korea. Yeah. We're talking about this guy called Kim Jong-un. <laughs> That's a mad guy. Yes, literally a mad guy. I think that guy is a, not a thing. He's a psycho. He needs to be taken to a psycho. But now, which doctor can treat that guy? Is there any doctor who can talk to that guy? Instead of the doctor treating that guy, that guy will be treating the doctor even, even though he doesn't know what you to treat, but he'll be the one treating the doctor. So, yeah. Talking of the same, you know, uh, there have been a brawl between uh, North Korea and South Korea for the longest. And, uh, you know, some other countries have intervened, countries like US, Canada, you know, UK, uh, uh, France. They have intervened in that, you know, try to uh, make sure that uh, uh, these two brothers, North Korea and South Korea, gets, you know, an amicable way of solving their problems. And uh, that is calling on uh, the president of the North Korea, the prime, uh, the prime president, the lifetime president, the ever eternal president of North Korea, that is Kim Jong Un, to try to come down and try to understand what's happening and bring everything, uh, you know, control everything. But who is Kim Jong Un? Huh? Uh, that guy is, really wants to take over North uh, South Korea, and uh, yeah, we've been testing ballistic missiles, you know, nuclear warheads, you know, and uh, recently they tested, you know, uh, a submarine uh, drone, a submarine drone, you know, that uh, supposed to sneak onto the enemy battleships and blow them off. And uh, you left, you left, I'm um, left asking questions. Then uh, what's gonna happen next if North Korea goes to war with South Korea? Will China go to war with Taiwan? What's happening? So is the whole world under war? And if North Korea goes to war with uh, South Korea, will the U.S. intervene? Of course, yes, they have a security pact with South Korea, so they will have to intervene. And in fact, the testing of the submarine drone was as a result of the you know, uh, uh, combined training uh, between uh, U.S., uh, South Korea, and Japan. Yep, so th they were doing their, uh, their, their drills, training drills and all that. And then uh, uh, Kim Jong-un decided to release their new 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 toy, you know, uh, the drone, the water drone, the submarine drone, you know, the new thing we've been working on. So 
let's let us show you guys how it works you know let's show you how it works so uh probably and uh, this is the truth if uh, north korea invades uh north korea invades south korea uh u.s will fight and if u.s comes into this war remember the countries that also support us will come into this war so i don't believe if north korea is in a greater position to win this war unless that guy pushes the red button but uh, is there anyone willing to push the red button if he pushes the red button where will he live because if the wall is destroyed by the nuclear bombs then there'll be no one surviving nothing surviving so he won't survive his people won't survive and then where will he live so i don't think if there is anyone who is in control of doing the larger nuclear warheads you know pulling the red button psh, ban them ban them no it won't be will happen that way so uh in all in all uh the world is a tour and uh, whatever's happening i think uh most of the people need to be uh, you know uh you know we need to be to brace ourselves in we need to be you know ready for anything and speaking of that uh back to africa yeah there's this was in africa recently whatever happened with uh you know in nigeria with boko haram you know uh massacres you know killing uh, christians and all that and then from boko haram we came to mali where mali you know it's like toppling the nigeria the french you know french government and trying to tell uh, all the francophones leave leave this country and they're trying to change the you know uh uh, French is, will be no longer the national uh, national language. They want to change it to their own language and all that. And then coming down to uh, Congo, everything has been happening there. Wars and wars, rumors of fortune every time. And actualities, you know, things are just bad. And then from Congo, we go to where? Uh, we're coming to, uh, you know, Ethiopia. And then your rumors again. Ethiopia wants to go to war. Remember with who? Brother Somali. So things are really, things are Things are really tough outside here. And I think, uh, as I said, we need to be prepared for the worst economical times and worst, yes, worst economical times and worst environmental times. Because if all these bombs are released into the air, remember there's some pollutions that are happening. So the atmosphere won't be good enough for each and everyone who is living on this world. As much as they're saying they're using tactical, tactical war weapons. Uh, I think if you push to the wall, you tend to use the best in your armor. So if some other countries will be pushed to the wall, they will tend to use the best in their armor if the leaders of those countries won't be put under control. But if the leaders of those countries will be put under control, then they won't use the best in their armor. And that's when say using the best in their armor, something that can scare anyone the hell out of each and every person that but nuclear bomb. Okay, uh, so we really desire that it won't get to that. But... Harsh economical times, yes. Remember, all the trades uh, depend on the peaceful environment that we have uh, around the trade routes. So if the, there is war among the trade routes or along the trade routes, then you remember or you need to understand that it's going to be worse along this uh no the 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 it's among the producers and the consumers so if the producer are producing their products but they're not reaching to the consumers remember everything has the expiry date so they expire and if there is uh consumers are not getting what to consume then hunger will hit so what are we supposed to do go back to our farms and work out yes farms do good but the goods that are from the farm they're much more that we cannot uh, be able to finish them alone so we need other people on the move so it is what it is so uh i think all in all uh, uh all in all we have to pray god that we be safe we have to you know be ready for uh, whatever happens if if it is that it should be your end today you know where you're gonna get to yeah 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 you wanna get to heaven you gonna get to hell oh choose is yours make a choice and make a decision now and now so there is the updates on the world stage like what's happening on the world stage you know wars after wars after wars so the world is at war and let's believe the ukraine uh, the North Korea South Korea war won't happen the China Taiwan war won't happen so that everything will be greater yes so that we can maintain but whatever it happens again we have no control uh the lesser we don't have control over anything it's a geopolitical world politics are ruling and uh, the strong the strong ones will always survive so as they play their cards let them make sure that uh the guys like us we are safe on this other end i love you guys keep on subscribing commenting and sharing this information let the whole world know what's happening that is what we do so until next time we meet, uh, this is your best host, you know, the voice of the voices, Alan Hoy. Uh.